Hi friends, I um, wanted to make a video on how to make a nutrient solution for hydroponics. What I've got here is five gallons of water that I've left out overnight to um, um, remove the chlorine. And um, I've measured this, I know roughly how high the water has to come. So um, I do know it's roughly five gallons and that's at this point, you know, that's about all I need is I don't need to be that exact. This is a pH meter and um, my water pH is typically quite high. Right now it's 7.9 so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, drop that pH a little bit using pH down and um, from past experience I know that uh, to drop it down to um, r roughly the 6 pH level. Um, that's what I'm looking to hit. So I know that 2 teaspoons is going to do that roughly. And I just say that because I've done a few others that um, that's what it takes. The um, nutrient solution that I'm using, I've got a fertilizer and I've got an Epsom salt and um, what I'm using is from hydro-gardens.com hobby formula 10822 and um, I bought this online hydro-gardens.com and um, with shipping and everything it cost between 40 and 45 dollars for the fertilizer and the Epsom salts. The Epsom salts you can actually get just about anywhere, probably cheaper, but um, the price uh, for per gallon when, when you um, do this as recommended, the price per gallon is under 10 cents per gallon of nutrient solution. So, you know, um, if we're talking about a three gallon grill and maybe you replace it once, that's uh, six gallons total. You're talking, it's going to be under 60 cents for the, the nutrients. So you can tell that um, the cost of um, nutrient solution is very low. Um, what is What really gets costly is if you use lights. Um, but let me uh, move on with making the nutrient solution. This is the, um, this is the 10 822 and um, I the the recipe for that this is one teaspoon per gallon so that's what I'm going to get started with and uh, going back to days when I used to own a bakery um, in order to uh, have a repeatable recipe um, typically what you do is you use a level teaspoon and to do that, um, I'm just, I'm not going to pack it down, I'm just going to try to level it off. And I've got a, some clumps in here. This, um, this fertilizer uh, absorbs water very easily. So there I've got a teaspoon, that's one. <coughs> Two, three, four, five teaspoons for five gallons. Now ideally I would weigh this out with a gram scale. Uh, you're going to get better repeatability if you use a gram scale and that's what I would prefer to do. I don't have one and so for now I am doing the teaspoon method. So what I'm going to do now is um, get a, a stirring stick and we will measure the parts per million and the pH of the nutrient solution. Okay, okay. One 
thing that uh, I noticed with this fertilizer, um, not all of it dissolves. You do have uh, some grit on the bottom, or, and that may be because it's old or because it absorbed moisture. It does tend to get kind of rocky if, if you let it in humidity. Um, that's why I try to I keep it in airtight, or roughly airtight. So I'm going to look at pH here. Use two tablespoons of pH down, and we're at 6.1. That's a good number. I'm going to look at parts per million, and I followed the recipe. And um, so I'm expecting about a thousand parts per million. I got 718. So um, 700, actually a rule of thumb, 800 is good for lettuce, 1,000 is good for something like peppers, and 1,200 is good for um, tomatoes. What, I'm, what I made up here, I'm using peppers and tr tomatoes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump it up. I also noticed that every uh, teaspoon tends to go up about 150. So we'll see what that does. It may, uh, as the um, fertilizer is dissolved, the uh, parts per million may actually go up. I uh, do want it over a thousand. I'm looking for something more like 1,200. Don't want to go much above that. So I'm at um, 9.58 right now. So that's. So you know when you're doing your recipes, the parts per million is really the, the final judge of whether you mixed it correctly. So if you don't have a parts per million meter or a pH meter, take a look on Google Shopping and just type in pH meter or PPM meter. It's also known as a total dissolved solid meter. Um, I got mine for uh, between ten and fifteen dollars a piece, so they're they're not expensive at all, and that's shipped. That's everything. So let's see where we are now. One thousand one hundred seventy, and that's very close to what I want. So I'm going to say that's good, and. Um, I will also check the pH again. And I'm at 6.0. Okay, uh, now I'm going to add the Epsom salt. Epsom salt, uh, the dose is one quarter teaspoon per gallon. So that means uh, one teaspoon and a quarter teaspoon. So, what I am going to do is, uh, first I'll give it a full teaspoon. And then a quarter. And that's it for Epsom salt. Give it a stir. To get a real accurate uh, number, I need to really wait an hour or so and come back, but I'll just get an initial pH. 
pH is 6.0. And um, total dissolved solids. Uh, 14, uh, 1,400. That's a little high. Uh, I think the um, tomatoes would enjoy that. So I think I am going to go ahead with that. I may uh, add a little bit of water to the pepper to reduce that amount a little bit. But I know I'm in the ballpark. And um, uh, actually, to get an accurate reading, I do need to wait until um, an hour or so, and I'll probably check it the next day as well. And um, this hobby formula from hydrogardens.com, um, it only needs magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salt, or MgSO4 um, as an addition. They have a lot of other different types of fertilizers, and they don't uh, include calcium nitrate in most of them. And I suspect it's because calcium nitrate may be responsible for this clumping up. So um, I actually would recommend starting out with the hobby uh, formula just because it's easy, and starting out is um, easier the better, at least for me. Um, the price on this for a five-gallon box, five-pound box, twenty-one ninety-five. MGSO four, five-pound box, seven ninety-five. So with shipping, you're looking forty to forty-five dollars for both of those. And uh, the recipe is one pound per one hundred gallons. So that means with five pounds, um, you can create five hundred gallons of nutrient solution and uh, 500 gallons will get you a lot of plants. Uh, I would estimate, you know, it depends what kind of plant you're doing, but, you know, roughly um, 100 plants, five gallons per plant, 100 plants. So, um, and each of those five gallons is gonna, five gallon batches is gonna cost you 50 cents. So, um, for me, the nice thing about hydro is um, I don't have to water it all the time. Hopefully it's set it and forget it. And um, the interesting thing is what what you learn real quickly when, when it's so easy to uh, create the growing um, uh, solution for the plants. What you really are looking for is solar energy and sunshine and uh, space to put the plants. So that's it. I'm wrapping up this. Um, I've just made five gallons of nutrient solution and um, got a little bit of cleanup, but other than that, uh, ready to uh, get some plants in the hydro buckets.